What's up, divas and divas? So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday, and it's your girl. So it's actually Tuesday, of course, and I'm not in my home. I'm not in Arizona right now. I'm definitely in New York. So I figured I would do a Real Talk because um, I just like to be consistent with certain things. And even if I'm on vacation, I still like to be consistent. You know what I mean? I like to, if this is something I do every week, then I like to do the same thing every week. You know what I mean? Um, I could have made a real talk before I left like I did the last time. My hair is driving me crazy because it seems like no matter what, why don't she just stay the way I want it to stay? Like, this is the new wig. Remember I was complaining about it? Well, let me tell you, I wore my favorite wig on the airplane, right? My favorite blonde one. She acted up. Like, seriously, the wig acted the fuck up. When I say acted the fuck up... First of all, my favorite um, hair filler fiber is the Topic. Not the Topic, because I don't fuck with them no more. But the um, Bold Boldify. Why did it just like somehow vanish from my hairline? So I was like so exposed, okay? And I realized this when I went to um, um, change planes in Chicago. I had a three-hour layover. So I decided to go to the bathroom and check my wig out because I felt like it kept slipping back. Well, let me tell y'all. When I got to the bathroom... First of all, there's only like three people in the bathroom before me. And the bathroom in the airport was pretty big and it was nice and clean. You know what I'm saying? So they have like there were six sinks against the wall and each sink had a mirror. And then there was just one little sp space by itself with a sink, a big ass sink and a big mirror and a counter. So that's where I went because nobody was there and I could place my things on there. The mirror wasn't that big, but listen, all the other mirrors were long so you could see your body. Can you please tell me why women feel the need to, bitch, stay over there in your motherfucking sink and mirror. So you want to come over here from that mirror where you just washed your motherfucking hands at and start styling yourself while I'm standing here like, I'm looking and I let it slide for like two people. Then by the third person, I was like, I know I must be on some type of camera or camera show where this is supposed to be like a fucking joke because now y'all are being real disrespectful to me. It's already bad enough that my wig is being disrespectful by acting the fuck up. But now y'all bitches is really like, come on. And these are older women, like older women. So I'm just like, y'all should know fucking better. But you know what? Maybe we're not going to say nothing. She's just going to continue to try to fix her hair. So at least I had my book bag. And inside my book bag was my makeup that I was bringing with me. And, you know, so I had like, I didn't have my filler fibers in there because that was in my luggage under the plane. So, but I had some eyeshadow that was black, but it still really didn't work out that great. But I had like some bobby pins and a hair tie. Let me tell y'all, by the time I was done, a bitch hair was cornrowed here and cornrowed there. And it looked really cute. Okay. Because I had stood in there for like 20 minutes trying to fix this fucking wig. And I know what happened. I called myself trying to rig it up and make it fit a little bit more snug. So I got the really wide elastic, okay, the really wide elastic, and I sewed it onto the cap, and I placed the combs up higher. I should have just left that shit the way the fuck it was, or used the same size elastic, elastic as I used for this one, which is like the thinner ones, it's like the one and a half inch one. Here a bitch try to be fancy using like a three to four inch elastic, like, where are you doing that at? It didn't work out in my favor, especially because I moved the combs, so... Yes, I had to kind of like change my whole hairstyle and then the fucking hair just kept tangling and tangling and I was brushing it and it was breaking off like I just because of all the hairspray I put in it. So at this point I was like and it wasn't laying properly and you know what I'm saying my husband he doesn't have a needle and thread so it's not like I could remove the combs and sew them back in. I could have went to Walmart but, but I wasn't even going to do all that. So I just I have brought this one and this one lays just a lot more better but the, the issue is what the fuck is this? I just tried to comb this. I mean, I just brushed this, and this is what it just keeps fucking doing. Okay, so it's starting to really piss me off. But anyway, so I'm not really going to make this that long because I'm using my vlogging camera, and I don't really know how long the battery will stand um, because I do have a backup batteries, but I did forget to plug them in. And also, I got to pick up my husband from work. So, yeah. And as far as my stay, my, you know what I'm saying? I, I miss home. I really do miss my kids at home. You guys know how I feel about them. I, they get on my nerves. They was getting on my nerves and I was ready to go. But I do miss them. Mom's been crying for me. You know what I'm saying? I had to talk to her about that. And I do miss them. They all miss me. And I can't wait to get back home even though I left. You know what I'm saying? And I need a vacation. I really cannot wait to get back home. Like, seriously. 
it's cold out here and shit. It's just okay. I miss I miss my home, you know what I'm saying? You you take a few days away from your kids or your family and then you realize like, you know, I really miss them. They get on my last nerve and I really do love them. And of course I do love them, but you know, I do need a vacation and I do need a break from them. So definitely I'm glad that I did leave and um I'll be really more, you know, like excited to see them when I get back. Um but yeah. So now as far as that okay so yeah like i was saying you know i'm having a really great time and shit um i just miss my kids i was happy to see my son and my daughter-in-law and my grandson and shit like that but you know it's time to go back home and um you know i just realized like i'm i'm really happy i have it i'm i'm really happy that um i i moved from here because it seems like when you go back to a place that you were very familiar with and you've been there for so long you really don't realize like how it impacted your life until you kind of like revisit it so like it's all like i always told you guys it's very gloomy here there's never any sun like right now there's no sun there's never any sun it's always very gloomy and dreary and just like really depressing and like you don't really notice that until you leave and like so when I came back before but I was only here for a day it was it was you know it's a little bit more sunnier out and it was it was warmer out but now just being here for the days that I've been here it's very depressing and like I didn't really notice any of this while I was living here all these years um in upstate New York but when I came back to when I'm here now it's like wow I really appreciate you know where I live at now you know what I'm saying like it's made like a really drastic impact on my life and my kids life and plus it's allowed me to see like April you don't have to be like stagnated in one particular spot you can better yourself and then you can move on so I guess it was like more or less like a stepping stool and I'm glad that I was able to leave this place because there's like really unfortunately I don't really see anything becoming of it like and I'm not knocking anybody who lives here. It's just like it wasn't for me. So my hair is really fucking pissing me off today. Like seriously. So we're going to get into this real talk. Yes, we're going to get into this real talk real quick. Okay. So like I always say, if you guys have a real talk that you would like for me to embark on or whatever the word may fucking be, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. If you want to change the names of the people in the email, you know what I'm saying? You can always tell me that you change the names. If you don't, I'm just going to automatically assume, et cetera, et cetera. So on that note, let's get into this real talk. Oh, and I want to say congratulations to my son, Jerron. He's probably not going to watch this, but whatever. For those people who you know what I'm saying? I did put his, his video at the end of one of my real talks before. And then I uploaded it singly uh, by itself on my YouTube channel. For all them hating ass bitches that always, you know what I'm saying? And if you a hating ass bitch, you a hating ass bitch. That's just what the fuck it is. You know what I mean? But I don't like fucking negativity, especially on my shit. Like, that's one thing that I'm not for. Like, when I get on here on real talk, I, this is what it's called, real motherfucking talk. And if you don't like how I speak or you don't like the curse words that I use, there's always the fucking exit button. You can take your ass and go somewhere the fuck else. However, if you don't like something, you just don't motherfucking like it. Like, we ain't all have to like the same fucking music. But the one thing that I don't appreciate is if I tell you that's my motherfucking sons, don't come to me talking about why would you upload that video on your channel, etc. etc. Why the fuck not? Like bitch you because he called you a bitch in the video, in the song or the video, don't take it literally. He didn't say you bitch. He meant bitches. Okay. Just like niggas say shit about females, women do the same shit. And y'all, some of y'all take that shit too literal. But anyway, I'm not gonna get into all of that. All I want to tell my son is congratulations because um Fetty Wap is coming upstate New York on the 23rd of February to do um, some tour or whatever. And so my son's agent got him opening for Fetty Wap, okay? So I'm very proud of him. And even though he's not he's probably going to watch this, I'm still very proud of him. So I want to congratulate him, okay? And that's about it. So on that note, let's get into this real talk, okay? Huh? 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 What? Yeah. 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 So I'm gonna do two because like I said I'm running out of time and it's 2 30 so I really do have to get going. Okay. So 
Hi, April. I love your vlogs and the Real Talk sessions. You are so down to earth and funny. I'm a relatively new subscriber, and when the notification comes through, I'm running to watch you. Well, I've changed the names. You can call me Tamika. I just need a little advice. First, I have a daughter. You can call her Justice that has a mental illness, and I'm going to go back just a little because this is going to be a long one. Sorry in advance. Well, when my husband and I first started noticing behavioral problems was when my daughter was in the seventh grade, going on to the eighth. She started losing a lot of weight. I mean, my baby was a, how should I say this, a healthy, thick girl, which I don't have a problem with at all. But anyway, she started getting really skinny to a point her teachers at school was asking was something wrong. And at first I got offended, like what? My daughter can't be little, but her moods changed also. And I just thought she was going through teenage phases so I left it alone well then she started not sleeping and getting very paranoid I wasn't sleeping either and she wasn't and my husband let's call him Rick worked third shift so I was just dealing with this on my own a lot well needless to say we took her to the ER several times with nothing really being done until she cut her hair and I'm like no something is wrong and I'm not taking my baby home like this something is really wrong well, she ended up being admitted in a mental hospital for almost a month. April, this was the hardest decision my husband and myself had to make because we couldn't stay with her. And it was two hours from where we stayed at. We could go visit her, but I missed my child and I have never been away from her. I cried myself to sleep every night. Fast forward to the present day and she is now 17. I still have, she still has some problems. She's, she's on a lot of medication. And she sees her psychiatrist and therapist on a regular basis. She was diagnosed with schizophrenia in children. And when we're told that, she also has some learning disability that could hinder, it, could hinder her from going to college and things. So my question is, what should I do to transition my child? Because she soon will be an adult and we can't stay home with her her whole life. My husband and myself want her to live a productive life like everyone else. I'm planning on becoming a guardian over her once she turns 18 because I want to be able to still talk to her, to her doctors and to her and have some say so. Because in our state, once they turn 18, the doctors legally do not have to talk to you. And they, that's the truth. I hate that. They, they do that in Arizona. Legally, uh, they do not have to talk to you. Anything or, or anything or tell you any type of diagnosis. And if she has a life crisis, I can't do anything about it. I have seen too many people that have mental illnesses be thrown away in our society. And I'd be damned if my, um, <clears throat> and I'd be damned, excuse my language, if my daughter ends up like that. I feel I'm her mama and I need to protect her by any means necessary. But when should she, um, the cutoff be? Because I don't want to hinder my daughter and have her feel like my husband and myself need to take care of her for the rest of her life. But we just want to make sure she is okay and can function in society. She is my sweetheart. Well, it's more, but I have wrote enough in advice would be helpful. And sorry this was so long. I appreciate it. And God bless. And thank you so much in advance. Sincerely, Tamika. And her daughter and her are so pretty. And they look so happy. And you know something, Tamika? Tamika, um, you know, it's hard being a mom. Um, so we got Tamika. We got her daughter, Justice, who's 17, who has been diagnosed with schizophrenia and also has like a learning disability. And we have Rick, the husband, who works third shift. So Tamika is basically left at home to deal with everything on her own. But she started noticing it when um, Justice was in the seventh grade. Um, she was losing a lot of weight. And then she started not sleeping. And then she cut her hair. So they did take her to the ER. And... Um, little Justice was in, um, admitted into um, the mental hospital. Now, I understand how she feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was, that's hard and she wasn't able to sleep. You know something? I don't really know if you guys remember, like, back in my very first channel on YouTube, I had, I had stopped doing videos for, like, three weeks one time and then they, then they became very, like, every once in a while because my oldest, my eldest son, Jerron, he was going through something. I don't really know what it was, but um, he started, like, spazzing out and he was 15. He was 15 when it started happening. And um, he was saying that the devil was after him and all kind of weird shit. So <clears throat> I honestly thought it was his girlfriend's family because they're, they're, um, they're Hispanic. And, you know, some of them be praying to, like, like weird stuff. So I really did think it was that because he told me that one day he was over there and he was praying. And he went into the closet to get his coat and, like, these red eyes was piercing at him. It was just weird. So I thought that this was where it was all stemming from. 
Then I thought it was my house that I was renting because the old people had lived there and died there. And my son's room was right next to the attic because the attic door was in his room. So he would say he would hear stuff. And my husband said he heard stuff. And my kids said that they heard stuff like people saying hello. I never heard any of this shit. So I don't really, I mean, like I believe them because everybody is telling me at different times. They're not all coming together and telling me at once. They're all telling me at different times. So I definitely believe everybody, but I've never experienced it. I just didn't like to go to the attic because the steps are so narrow and it was just like creepy kind of to me but I thought it was from that I don't really know what it was from but I tell you what my son he started bugging out and um breaking he broke my windows he broke my mirror he um he said he was going to kill himself it was just like a really hard time for me when he was 15 years old and um I had to have him arrested then they had to when they arrested him they ended up taking him to the mental hospital to the hospital and then they admitted him upstairs in the mental ward so he stayed there for two weeks two weeks he stayed there and I would go visit him it wasn't far it was like a five minute drive you know what I'm saying so it wasn't far but it would bother me a lot you know what I'm saying and then by the time that he was done he went back one more time after that um unfortunately so he had a total of two visits and um he was put on a lot of medication, two different medications, and I know, I don't remember them, but I do know that one of them made him gain weight, and one of them, um, a lot of weight, he, he gained a lot of weight, and his jaw was kind of like, would be always stiff, but um, either way, I understand how you feel about, like, having to leave your child in a situation like that, and it hurts, because it really honestly does, um, but, you know, some things we have to just learn to deal with in life. Um, I'm, 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 I'm grateful or, or happy that my son has outgrown whatever it was. From what I was told from the doctors, they say that boys at the age of like 15 and 14 and 13 have like some kind of hormone in their body. This is what I was told by the doctors where they start acting like they start acting out and they start getting really, really angry for no reason. So this is what I was told, okay? Which is not acceptable to me because my son was like really having like outrage and shit. You know what I'm saying? He would want to fight my other kids. Like not my little kids, but he would want to fight like my daughter Tati. And it wasn't acceptable. And it just wasn't acceptable. But this is what I was told by the doctors. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, this is some kind of hormone imbalance. I don't really fucking know. I've never heard of such a thing, but this is what I was told. But anyway, so he outgrew that. Um, <clears throat> however, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Schizophrenia is real. And it's unfortunate because even if you want to allow them to be on their own, you still are going to need to be around to help them. You know what I'm saying? They're going to always need help. And some people can deal with it on their own, but you have to be, like when I say they're always going to need help, like a guardian. You don't have to be hovering over her. You don't have to be like, do this, do that. But just, you know what I'm saying, check in. And when should you wean them away from like you being so hovering? I think like everything is at a, at a time. It's, it's, it's like at a pace. You have to take take it at a pace not rush anything because true indeed she is 17 but she's still not an adult you know what i'm saying and you are right in in a lot of these states because they do this in arizona and it pisses me off um when your kid turns 18 the doctors don't say anything to you they talk to your kid and like when i go to the hospital with my son he's 19 he has seizures and things like that they always talking to him and i really don't like that because he don't even know what the fuck is going on nor does he know anything about insurance or what doctor to call or what to do for himself so i have to always step in or he always has to say well you can talk to her or you can call her yet they still don't fucking call me okay so i feel like you know it all depends on the child and the person that you're trying to wean away from you. Some people are a little bit more mature than others. And you have to teach some of these children today, even the ones that don't have any type of mental illness or learning disability. You still have to teach these young teenagers um, how to be responsible and how to do things. Because we got these young kids out here that be acting a fucking fool. And there's nothing really wrong with them. They have no learning disability. They have no mental illness. But yet still, we still have to be like guardians over them. Because they just, they feel like they just lose their mind. And it's okay. So I think even regardless of what the person is going through in their life. Or what their mental health is. I think like, <clears throat> for everyone. Excuse me, I'm going to just sit back. Because my back is really hurting today. I think like. For everyone, it all depends on the person 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I really feel like it all depends on the person in general. So, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't, me personally, I wouldn't really, like, overwhelm Justice with a whole bunch of shit at one time. Meaning, you need to teach her how to, let's see, grocery shop. I would start off with, like, little things, little things. Or maybe not even just little things, but a little bit, a little thing, a little thing, and then maybe some, a hard task and then bring it back to a little task you understand what i'm saying so meaning like if she's gonna live on her own eventually maybe when she's like 21 who's to say she wants to leave when she's 18 or 19 or even 21 but you do want to make her be um you do want her to be self-sufficient before then so what i would do is i would start off with little things at first like teaching her how to do the laundry because she's going to have to wash her clothes you want to teach her how to do the laundry and you want to teach her how to separate the clothes and what type of detergent to buy that's to some people adults don't even know how to do that shit. so to some people that could be a little bit overwhelming because it's not just little it's it's really an important step and being clean that's part of your hygiene so i think like doing little things with her at a time would make it a lot easier and she'll be able to grasp it, okay and you'll be able to teach her and she'll be able to understand more versus just throwing it all at her at one time and thinking that she's supposed to get this and just totally leaving her so i would start off with like small things like doing the laundry you know what i'm saying not cooking but doing the laundry you know what i'm saying because that's an easy task and building up and when you when you teach her these things show her in person and allow her to do her laundry and allow her to do your your laundry i feel like if you allow them to do your laundry that's building a trust and that's showing them that they're responsible but it's also building a trust between them because i don't really like nobody touching my fucking laundry i don't like nobody doing my laundry only because i feel like i do it best and i don't want you fucking up my shit so that means that i don't trust you enough to do and handle my laundry so with that being said i feel like you teaching her how to do the laundry let her do her own laundry first and then allow her to do your husband's and your laundry. That builds a trust and that also shows her like, you know what? I trust you enough and I feel like you are there enough where I'm going to allow you to wash our clothes. So that's just one way of teaching her and one way of weaning her off of things. And you know, you take her to the grocery store and you tell her, you know, make a list. Not everybody has to make a list. However, I think like it's beneficial and it would probably be like a great thing to make a list, especially for like in her conditions, teach her how to make a list. So that way when she does go to the store, she doesn't forget anything. She's got everything she needs and she's not getting all this extra. She's not going out of budget, but I would definitely teach her how to grocery shop by making a list. And I mean, like you can do the coupon thing, but I would think like with the coupon thing, I would think that would be more like within the budget. You know what I'm saying? Like managing her money. So I wouldn't necessarily do that right then and there like with grocery shopping because grocery shopping is very overwhelming, especially because you have to go around a bunch of people. You know what I'm saying? So she's going to be out and open and she's going to be reacting with the public. So I feel like with grocery shopping, you know what I'm saying? Allow her to just make a list. Teach her how to make a list. Ask her. Make, so that way she doesn't have to go to the grocery store every day. I can't stand when people go to the grocery store every day. Like, that shit drives me crazy. Like, I don't like to go to the grocery store daily. But, you know, we all different. So I think it really has to do with how you wean her and how you teach her how to do little things. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody is different. And I understand that you want to be a guardian to her. And you don't want to have to baby her and carry her her entire life. And so that's why now... I think like it's really important like some kids like what mumsy she's mumsy would be 11 and i try to kind of like wean her from me because she likes to be up under me she cries she's been crying like a baby since i've been gone um not every day but twice and i had to like calm her down because you know she really misses me and i have to let her know like you know it's okay to miss people sometimes when we miss one another and then we come back that just shows that you know you know we appreciate one another more so i would definitely just you know take her baby steps you know and definitely like teach her how to take her medication and just teach her the importance of taking her medication because that shit when you don't have certain shit in your system it kind of like brings you out of whack that's just like with me if i don't take like my medication to lose weight and things like that then it kind of like throws me off balance you know what i'm saying because i have vitamins that i take that give me energy and shit like that so i have to make sure that i myself take what i need because if i don't bitch please i'll be all fucked up you know what i'm saying so 
I think like it's really important to teach people like things step by step. It's like baby steps, you know what I'm saying? You can't overwhelm people. That's just like with me, you can't overwhelm me. If I need to learn how to use a computer or like with my MacBook, I bought this huge book of how to learn how to use my Mac computer, first Mac I ever had. It was so overwhelming and I couldn't understand it. So what did I do? I went to YouTube and I took lessons step by step at my own pace and I was able to do them in baby steps versus this big ass fucking book. You know what I'm saying? So I did everything in baby steps and everybody is like that. You can't overwhelm somebody and expect them to grasp that shit. Like <clears throat> me personally, I let everything to be in baby steps because I need to learn this shit. I'm still trying to figure out this motherfucking vlogging camera and that shit is in um, the babiest of baby steps. But I think like you'll be able to wean her but just take it in steps. If I were you, I would make a list of what I was going to show her, teach her how to do first. And then you check it off and each time that you've taught her and you feel like she's ready, you allow her to do that. So that way you trust her and you're showing her that you trust her enough to allow her to make breakfast for you, wash your clothes um, or you know what I'm saying? Make you dinner. You know what I'm saying? You're allowing her, or grocery shop for you. You're allowing her to do these things. So each time a task is done, by rewards, you show her, you know what? I want you to do that because you've done it and I trust you enough that you have grasped it that I want you to do it for me. That's just like an incentive. You don't have to reward her with anything physically or like, you know what I'm saying? But just the fact of you let, allowing her to do it for you is like entrusting her or entrusting her with your belongings, with your health. So that's how I would do it. I would definitely do it in baby steps and I would definitely allow her to basically once she's learned, you know, say so once she's learned that task, you move on to the next one. But before she moves on to the next one, allow her to do it for you. So that way she can feel like, OK, I did do something right. And I'm doing this. Builds more confidence and it just builds more like responsibility, but mostly it builds more confidence. And who doesn't want to be confident? Like she already struggles with some things. So and she has a learning disability, I really think like step by step is easier for her. You know what I mean? You can like teach her little ways to remember things, maybe post-it notes and things like that. Each person has a different way of learning and everybody is different when it comes to weaning. But I think like little bits by little bit and just, you know what I'm saying, helping her and showing her when she's done and she has accomplished something that you want to show, you want her to show you the accomplishment by doing it for you and your husband. You know what I'm saying? It's just some things we have to do for our children. Don't ever feel like you babying them, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody needs help. Everybody needs help. Um, I need help sometimes, you know what I'm saying? I would never feel like I was being baby, but I don't understand everything. But I just feel like, you know, we have to be there for one another because people are sick. Everybody has something going on in their life. And life is not like it's supposed to be. Like some people want it to be perfect or just grand. And don't always be like that. You know what I'm saying? It don't always be like that. But it what but 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 what can make a life a lot easier and better for a person is if we allow them to learn on their own or to learn with our help and also show them that we are here. Regardless, we still here. You just may need a little bit of help. And whenever you need help, give me a call. Just let her know that because some people don't even want to call. They feel ashamed. You know what I'm saying? And I understand some people are kind of afraid to ask for help. I'd be like that though. I'd be like that. Like I don't like to ask nobody for nothing because I just don't like the word no. But um, I think like if we are able to instill in people that we can help them and this is what it's about, then they won't be too scared to ask for help. So I would definitely take it by little bit by little bit, step by step. Like that song, my step by step. I know your heart breaks step by. like that. So I'm going to move on to the next because I got 12 minutes, okay? Hi, April. I hope your trip to New York um, is or was a good one. I know your family and hubby are or were excited to see you. I have a situation that I have been dealing with for quite some time and I still don't know what to do. Hopefully you can help me. My name is blank, but you can call me Asia for the video. I have a two-year-old son who doesn't have a relationship with his father. Let's call my son Jay and his dad Kevin. Kevin and I, and, and I met in 2013 and ended things when I was six months pregnant back in June of 2015. A month after we started dating, Kevin told me his ex-girlfriend was pregnant and it might be his. I stayed because he said it probably wasn't his kid and I believed him. They did a paternity test and he told me the kid wasn't his. I later found out on my own he lied and that the kid is his. Anyway, the mother of the kid would stalk me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram during the whole time I dated Kevin, after he and I broke up, and probably still to this day. 
After dating for a while, Kevin slowly became physically and mentally abusive. I don't know why I stayed, but I did. Despite the abuse, I got pregnant on New Year's Day 2015. He expected me to get an abortion like I did with our first child months before, but I refused and told him I'd have the baby with or without him. He said he wanted nothing to do with our son and would be just fine paying child support and not seeing him at all. During the first six months of my pregnancy, we still lived together and the abuse got worse. I know he was trying to cause a miscarriage and I finally woke up and realized I needed to protect my unborn child and myself from this unstable man. So I went and got a temporary restraining order and forced him to move out of our apartment. During this time, he denied my son and, and accused me of sleeping around. I got a paternity test done right after my son's birth and put Kevin on child support for a good measure. At first, I let him come to the doctor's appointments for Jay, and every now and then, Kevin's mother would send him to drop off pet diapers, but that was it. He never spent time with Jay at all and never asked to, and never asked to either. After a while, he stopped doing diaper drop-offs too, and I didn't hear from him. Mm. Months later, I told Kevin's mother that I needed my son's medical car from Kevin because I had planned to move back to Texas. Since Kevin was on child support, he had to have Jay on his insurance, and he kept the card. His mother told me, told him what I said, and all of a sudden, I get served with papers saying Kevin wants visitation after a whole year of no contact with my son. So we go to court, and I'm trying to tell them that Kevin doesn't really want to see my son. He just wants to stop me from leaving California to go to Texas and see me suffer. I tell them about the abuse and the psychopathic mind games he uses, but they still gave him visitation once a week that I had to supervise. I wasn't happy about it, but decided to be grown and be cordial for my son. A few weeks into visitation, Kevin started to bring his other son from the ex term current girlfriend now with him to the visits. I let it slide the first time, but I told him it was unfair to my son to have to split time with the kid that he sees every day at home when he only sees my son for a few hours a week. I told Kevin not to bring his other kid anymore, who he was still claiming wasn't his, by the way, even though I already knew the truth. To me, it seemed like Kevin was just looking for a way to stop coming to visitation, but wanted it to look like my fault, not his. Kevin loves to throw stones and hide, his, and hide his hands. He knew bringing the other kid upset me, so he kept bringing him week after week until I finally stopped letting him come over. He called the police on me twice for not letting him see my son, but nothing happened to me. He told me before we broke up that one of his goals was to send me to jail. For God knows what, I don't know. Like I said, he's psycho and it's unfortunate that I've stayed to find out just how mentally messed up he is. So I stopped vegetation and he finally stopped bugging me after three missed visits. I forgot to add that shortly after my son was born, both Kevin and his mother told me to raise my son by myself. His mother never liked me and I still don't know why. So now it has been another full year since my son has had any contact with Kevin. Kevin's mother texts me on holidays asking to see my son. She lives a few cities over from me, but that's not the issue. She has been texting me for a few months now since the holiday season started back in October. I usually don't answer back, but I'm not going to lie. If I do answer, then it's usually to cuss her ass out and to tell her to leave me alone and to remind her of what she said when she told me to raise my son on my own. I always tell her I'm doing what she asks, so bug off because we're not family. I also tell her that her own son, Kevin, doesn't even ask to see my son, so why does she asked when I barely even know her. My phone number has not changed in the past four years and Kevin still doesn't call or text about my son. So it's crazy to me that his mother is going so hard. She raised a pitiful excuse for a person and once she has even encouraged Kevin to keep abusing me while I was sitting right there. I don't know what I don't know I don't want that kind of woman around my son. What if she teaches him that as well? Like abusing women is okay. What do you think April? Should I let my son visit this woman? He doesn't even know and who I barely know all I've had is bad experiences with this family, and I don't want any drama in my life, especially since the first girlfriend's kids who most likely be around when my son is over there. The last time my son was around the other girl, she stole a hat from him and a pair of pants, even though Kevin has three kids now, one from me and two now from the stalker girlfriend that he got back with. To me, those kids are not my son's brothers. I don't know her or, kid, or her kids, and quite frankly, I don't want my son around her or her kids, especially since he has threatened me physically before. Should I just keep ignoring his mother's text and keep my son to myself like I've been doing? Or should I let the grandmother see him even though I know it's nothing but drama? Mm. So basically, my girl Asia has a son who is two years old with this asshole who doesn't do shit for her or the little boy. And let's not mention that the grandmother of um, the asshole, she ain't no better because she already done told Asia 
We don't want to have nothing to do with your son. You can raise him on your own. Let me tell you something. When you say shit like that to me and you ain't been doing nothing and you ain't never even seen my son, I'm not about to feed into your bullshit. Now, here's the thing that I don't get. How do you want to stop somebody from bettering their lives and your kid's life that you don't even fucking deal with? Um, me, I would have never even told his mother that I was leaving to go back to Texas. That's one thing. When I left Schenectady, New York, I didn't tell nobody. I didn't tell my husband's sister. I didn't tell my husband's mother. I fucking left. You know what I'm saying? I left because I'm not about to let or allow anybody to fucking stop me. That's one. And for two, if somebody is abusing you like that, they still shouldn't be allowed to stop you. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing. They shouldn't be allowed to stop you. But here's the thing. Now you got his mother who's all in your business and you got him who doesn't even come around even after visitation has already been situated he made a few visitations and now he hasn't been around for like the last three or four god knows how many by now but then you got his psychopathic mother who's like well i want to see my grandson how's he doing let me tell you this first of all your son is two okay i have a three-year-old grandson when little kids don't know people why would you put them in an uncomfortable situation like that like that might be her grandson, that is her grandson, but that doesn't mean that you have to put your two-year-old son in an uncomfortable situation to where he don't know these people and he's sitting there crying his little heart out. You know what I'm saying? And you don't know how they act or how they react to him crying and shit. He can't speak for himself. He can't tell you what really happened. He can't tell you what was going on over there. You know what I'm saying? So for me personally, I just would tell her to stop texting my phone, okay? Or block her number is the one thing I would do first is I would block her. I would block her on social media and I would definitely block her from calling my phone or texting my phone. No, I wouldn't allow my two-year-old child to go over there to people's homes that he don't even even know you know what i'm saying he too well wow. that's like that's like that's like punishment to him like he don't understand why he's over there it's hard enough and it's bad enough that they really don't understand because they're only two you know what i'm saying but to bring him somewhere and just to drop him off and leave him that's hard that's hard. It'd be one thing if you and him were together, like you was visiting with him to his grandmother's house, but I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to be put in that predicament, and I'm pretty sure she don't want your ass around neither. So therefore, if you can't spend, she can't spend time around her grandson with you in the presence, then no, I don't think that is acceptable. No, I wouldn't do it. And yeah, I would ignore her, but to, um, I wouldn't even ignore her. I would block her from fucking contacting me. And bitch, please, I would fucking pack my shit the fuck up and get the fuck out of Dodge. Ain't nobody about to sit around in some fucking California when you really want to go back home to fucking Texas and be bothered with these fucking lunatic fucking scumbags, okay? This old lady got a whole lot of shit coming to her. Who in their right mind tells somebody, well, you could raise your kid by yourself because we don't want to have nothing to do with it. What type of mother are you? What type of example are you setting for your son that is having a baby? Like, you are no motherfucking good like you know what i'm saying i have two grandchildren um my son and he always with his son they live together him and his girlfriend they've been together for god 12 years now and my grandson is five i don't know they might as well get married but he's a good father and they're together now then i got my other grandson who's three tinky his father ain't nowhere in the picture his grandmother she live out here in schenectady this bitch don't do shit she calls on holidays okay the same thing well i want to send him some money to let him know bitch it doesn't matter what you send for the money to let my let her let my grandson know that you sent him a gift he don't even fucking know you tammy he don't know you bitch so you think buying him a gift is going to allow him to know who you are? No, he doesn't fucking know you. He's seen you one time, okay? When he was like a few months old, when my daughter Tati brought him out here to visit you guys, they don't check on my grandson. They don't send him shit. They don't ask if he need anything. It's none of that shit. This bitch don't do shit, okay? Tammy don't do shit, all right? So therefore... I wouldn't want my grandson coming out here. She always talk about she going to come visit. You can come visit Arizona, but bitch, guess what? The real grandmother, me, a bitch like me going to be sitting right the fuck there like am. So, no, I don't think that it's appropriate for you to drop him off or for you to allow them to take him and for him to be, you know what I'm saying, surrounded by people that he don't even know. Like, don't put him through that trauma. You know what I'm saying? If she want to visit with him and she want to get to know him, then she could do that while she in your presence. And if she can't do that while in your presence, then, hey, I guess that's going to be a no visitation for her that fucking day. Also, on top of that, like, okay, so he got the stalker girlfriend and who knows what this bitch going to do. So she done already stole a pair of pants and a motherfucking hat. 
Like, okay, are we that motherfucking trifling that we stealing from babies? Okay, or do you know that's a fact? Either here nor there, it doesn't matter if it's a fact or not. But, you know what I'm saying? If you don't want to come around, don't push your baby off on people that don't want to be bothered with him. That's fine. If you don't want to be bothered with him, that's fine. We never have to teach our children that their other parent ain't shit because eventually they will see that on their own and they ain't got to worry about us telling them that. But I'll tell you what, and I'll tell you this from personal experience. Now, my mom, she always look after my kids, meaning she call and check on them. She see how they doing. You know what I'm saying? She speak to them. Um, their other grandmother, my ex-husband's mom, and you see I call him ex-husband and husband, but he's really my ex-husband. She don't call and ask how they doing. She don't do any of that. You know what I'm saying? And that's fine. They don't know her like that. Um, and that's fine. They do know her, but they haven't seen her in so long. Okay. Um, I wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even leave them with her. Okay. And my kids are 15 and 11. Well, Mumsy's 10, but she'll be, you know what I'm saying? They 15 and 10. I wouldn't even allow them to, to be with her because that's an uncomfortable situation. And I wouldn't dare put my kids in that. And it's unfortunate that that's your child's family. And I, I go through the same shit, but you know what? Sometimes we just got to let shit alone we have to really leave shit the fuck alone because it's not even worth it it's not worth the headache and it's not worth the drama you know what i'm saying just like you said it's not worth the drama fucking ignore that bitch text that bitch back and tell her to leave the fuck alone or better yet don't even bother with her just block her and just be done with them girl let me tell you something i bet you if you move to cat um move back to texas they wouldn't even fucking know because if that man ain't fucking checking for your son now how much you want to bet he ain't gonna be checking for him later on in life you know what i'm saying so if he happy with his little family that he got right now then allow him that and move on with your life fuck that bitch she's trifling how dare you say some shit like that about your own grandchild we don't want to be bothered well bitch i don't want to be bothered neither so leave me the fuck alone and if you already keep telling her that you don't want to be bothered and she still ain't getting it and she's still doing that shit to you girl bye tell that bitch to kick rocks and die some motherfucking way and then block her ass and don't put your son in no type of situation to where he's feeling uncomfortable he don't need to that's not fair to him you know what i'm saying he's been with his mama all this time and you is what he knows and let's continue it like that so now know you guys i got to go it is 301 and i gotta go pick up my husband because he get up at 3 30 so um yes you guys i will speak to you guys um when i get back all the videos that i post were already done of course you guys know that because of the background but i will definitely let you know how my trip has been i had didn't vlog a thing um because he don't really like to be on camera and that's cool whatever but i'm going to see my mom tomorrow in new york city so i'll be vlogging with her so yes you guys i love you stay deep and deep delicious make sure you rate comment subscribe thumbs this video up and i'll see you guys the other side. What? Damn. 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 Damn.